Hello, my name is Rini Franklin. Um, I'm the archivist with Clare County Council. And today for History Week, I would like to talk to you about the Barrett Collection. And so our story really begins in 2018 when um, Mr. Joel Sheehan, uh, grandson of Commoner Joseph Barrett, contacted uh, Dr. Paul O'Brien from the Kilrushen District Historical Society. Um, because he was concerned that there may still exist papers relating to his grandfather and his business still remaining in um, the family home in Kilrush, which was um, then for sale. So he was quite concerned for these papers and he um, asked the um, society committee members um, to intervene on his, his behalf. So basically to give you a context um, relating to the papers, um, they would have been the property of Commonant Joseph Barrett. Um, Commonant Barrett was born in 1888 in Barnegie and Dara, Ennis County Clare, to parents Sylvester and Joanna Barrett. And he was the eldest of 16 children, all named beneath. Um, the family would have been very active um, in the War of Independence and Civil War. Um, you can get an idea of this from his mother's obituary, um, which was written in 1943. And in it, it writes, um, all took part in the War for Independence. And on one occasion, four sons and one daughter staged an attack on their own on Tier McLean or S.E. Barracks. Another brother, Jack Barrett, took part in the gun running at Hoth and afterwards joined the French Foreign Legion where he won the Grand Cross of the Legion of Honour. She also was the mother of the late Commandant Frank Barrett, OC First Western Division IRA and of Commandant J. Barrett, Joe Barrett of the Active Service Unit, who is now in command of the Guard at Government Buildings. Another son is Brother Ignatius Barrett, who accompanied um, Mr. De Valera into Ennis on the occasion of his rest under fire. So it really does um, give you a synopsis of the entire family. His brother, Frank Barrett, then, um, he was also chairman of Clare County Council from 1928 to 31, but he died aged 39. And um, as mentioned, his brother, Jack Barrett, who was um, killed in... Um, France in World War One. He died aged 27. Um, his sisters then, um, Pauline um, and Josie. Um, Josephine married um, Lieutenant General Patrick Mulcahy, um, with whom she had five children, but she died quite young at the age of 39. Um, and he subsequently married um, Frances, also known as Pauline, her sister, four years later. Um, another article written on the same year in the Clare Champion, um, it writes, the record of the Bards from boyhood to the fight for freedom is one which few and clear of honour to equal. They are all natural war veterans their names looming largely in the history of agitation in the Anglo-Irish and Civil War periods. Uh, this photograph comes from the collection. Um, it was in quite bad condition um, when, we, when we found it. Um, it was quite dirty also, so we needed it um, to be conserved. And we then had it digitized. Um, and as you can see, I'm in Delera there, De Valera there in the back left. It's, it's a great photograph, really. Um, so, obviously, the Kilrushen District Historical Society um, committee members were very conscious of um, the, the Barrett family, and um, they immediately um, decided to um, survey the building and um, to see what they could find. Um, so, when they did gain access to the building, um, they found their way to the attic where they discovered um, a multitude of boxes and trunks and filing cabinets um, filled with papers and memorabilia and ephemera and publications and ledgers. And um, they were astounded really at the, the content and the size of the collection. 
So on um, the preliminary survey, um, they found mainly auctioneering material related to um, Pamela and Joseph Bart's auctioneering business, um, which would have been in the same building. Um, the material that would have been found would have been relating to the auctioneering business containing ledgers, financial accounts, leases, agreements, land commission files, valuations, maps, ephemera, and many photographs. Um, the, the photographs um, were quite useful um, in terms of um, a pictorial, I suppose, evidence of um, buildings uh, which would have been uh, sold by the auctioneering business, but um, they would also give names and addresses and dates, which can be very useful for researchers. Um, in terms of the military archive, um, they're on, in their survey, um, we found army circulars, memos, orders, and regulations dated from the 1920s military service pension applications and statements from numerous individuals dating from 1923 to 65, applications for service medals, Irish Defence Force publications, civil war operation and intelligence reports. Um, we also found um, a particularly interesting anti-treaty file containing, let's say, military orders, including an assassination list containing names and addresses of senators and also um, accounts of attacks and reprisal att attacks pack orders um this is um let's say um one of what we would have found um its instructions on the use of codes um obviously thank you thankfully this this particular code was not destroyed as per order um, but this would be, let's say, a typical um, piece from the, the military side of the collection. Um, and it's, it's really interesting. And um, I think it will provide great evidence in the future for um, historians and researchers. Um, so it came to this stage that the um, Kilrushan District Historical Society approached the archive, Clare County Archives. Um, and we were obviously delighted to be a repository for the collection um, because we appreciate the importance of the collection in terms of the auctioneering collection, but also in the military archive. Um, so the first thing we needed to do as we were conscious basically of the size and the vulnerable state of the collection, we needed the collection to be rehoused. So um, as a joint venture, the Kilrush and District Historical Society and Clare County Archives, we decided to make an application to the Heritage Council for grant funding to rehouse the collection. So basically it's in order to um, ensure its preservation, but also eventually to make it accessible. So we were delighted that our joint application for funding was accepted and we were in a position then to purchase archival quality storage material. So um, this is an example of material which um, was rehoused from the collection. Um, obviously, um, the collection had many types of media, such as files, maps, photographs, and publications. So each requires its own certain type of enclosure or file. So um, this part of the project was extremely time consuming you know, and, and quite difficult um, with such a large collection. So we basically were just in a position to rehouse the collection. Um, cataloging for the collection has not yet taken place. But while rehousing the collection, um, we became cognizant of the suitability um, for this collection with the Decade of Centenaries programme, which focuses on the development of access to historical records. So we um, applied for a grant to digitize a certain element of the military archive within the collection, as we thought most suitable. And we were successful. And now these records are in the process of digitization. 
So in turn, this has led us to the Digital Repository of Ireland. Um, to give you some background, the Digital Repository of Ireland is a national infrastructure for the arts, social sciences and humanities. DRI provides reliable, long-term, sustained access to social and cultural digital data. So the digitized material from the Barrett Collection will become available um, on the DRI platform before the year is over, and we are very excited about this. So it will be the, I suppose, initial collection to be launched on this part platform from Clare County Archives. Um, finally, an exhibition um, comp compiled by Clare County Archives will be um, relating, obviously, to the Barrett Collection, will be available to view um, for History Week in Kilkee Library. Um, materials, a selection of materials from the collection and some memorabilia and artifacts will also be on display. Um, finally, I would like to particularly thank uh, Dr. Paul O'Brien from the Kilrushen District Historical Society Committee and also Paul Gleason, um, another committee member, for their help with this project. Um, also, I would like to thank members of the Barrett family who have been so helpful and accommodating um, in researching material and identifying photographs um, with whom I will be working with over the next few months um, while processing and cataloging the collection. And I look forward to that. Um, I will also um, keep um, you all um, aware of any um, advancements um, when the cataloging has been completed. Okay, thank you very much.